Dismeriyibakard, my name is Michal Amarahertig, some of you might know me, others won't. I'd say the Kerry man present, the important male here today is the Kerry man, Pat Brown from Ballydoff, and I'd like to congratulate both Carolyn and Pat on their wedding this morning. Hope the day goes great. I think it's a very fitting union between a Clahara head woman and a Ballydoff man. Ballydoff isn't too far from Kerry head, so you could have a ocean communication between the two places. Strange how they got together. Kerry people don't like losing one of their own, but he slipped through the net. Work got him up around that part of the world. The net gathered round him. There was no escape. We are resigned to that fact now. Louth go back a long time in the history of Gaelic football. The first ever final played was between Limerick Commercials and Louth Young Ireland. It was played in a field in Klonski. The field was known as the Big Bank. That was the only accommodation for spectators, a bank outside the River Dodders. What a change it is to the Croke Park we know today. Well, Loud lost that one, but they had a great team in the first decade of the 1900s. They played Kerry in the All-Ireland Final of 1909. Kerry won it, but was regarded as the best final up to that time. The whole country were talking about it. They were due to meet in the final of the following year, but Kerry withdrew and didn't take part in the final and Louth were crowned All-Ireland champions. The reason that Kerry withdrew was the Great Southern Railway refused to put on a special train for the Kerry followers. So Kerry said that wasn't fair for followers all over the country they opted out and from then to this day there are good train services to all our Ireland finals. Loud won that. Croke Park didn't exist at the time. There was a bit of ground there, Jones's Road. It wasn't owned by the GA. But somebody got an inspiration. Archbishop Croke had died and there was a Croke Memorial Committee. And they decided to run a tournament for the Croke Cup. Kerry and Loud played in the final, drew a huge crowd, it ended in a draw. The replay drew even a bigger crowd, and the money from those two games was the money that bought Croke Park. I think there should be a plaque somewhere to both Louth and Kerry. These things happen. Louth went on to win the All Ireland final of, 2000, of 1912, beating Antrim, who had beaten Kerry in the semi final. So that was a great start. And then to stay with that decade, Bally Duff was very much in the news because Bally Duff won the All-Ireland Hurling Championship of 1901. And to this day, Kerry remained the only hurling county that were never defeated in an All-Ireland final. They never played in one since. But uh, the Bally Duff players, they were there. So another Bally Duff man made fame. London won the Hurling All-Ireland of 1901. It was 1891, I have to correct that. It was 1891 that Bally Duff won for Kerry. 1901, London won the All-Ireland. And there was a man called Edmund Barrett on that London team, a member of the London police. They were winners. He made further history later when he won gold, silver and bronze medal at Olympics. More than one Olympic. So... That's Ballied Off and that's Louth. 57, I remember it well when Louth won another fantastic All-Ireland. Dermot O'Brien, the late Dermot O'Brien, a great friend of mine. I had the honour of knowing most of that team. They won the All-Ireland playing lovely, lovely football right through the year. Unfortunately, they haven't won since. They nearly won a Leinster a few years ago. I wasn't present. I was at another game, but to this day, I think it was the greatest wrong I have ever seen at the end of a match that Louth wouldn't crown the champions. But that's the way the world goes. We can look forward to the future. The blend of Kerry hurling and Louth football. You'd never know that Louth might come and win a hurling all Ireland sometime. But there's great friendship between Kerry and Louth always. The first book on Gaelic football ever was written in 1914 by Dick Fitzgerald. He had just won his fifth all Ireland for Kerry captain on two occasions he wrote a book on Gaelic football and there's lovely mention 
of his great admiration for the style of Louth football. He mentions them very early in the book. So maybe I've enough said. I know that you have a great day. Don't forget now to get out and get the ballet off man. He should have good footwork. He might be the type that would give a demonstration of dancing with the new, now, Mrs. Brown. They might give a demonstration of dancing, the two of them. Let them make up the dance. Anyway, I'm sure it's been a great day, all day, and that today will not end today. It will stretch into tomorrow. Guim schlocht schlachte, er schlocht vor schlachte. Somebody present will explain that to you. It's a very old Irish saying used at weddings always. It has something to do with children and grandchildren and great great grandchildren and further on. So, Tamagohin Rotagum, Gunairi Gigalib, because Gomeramid Galeir Bio Eranam Shorish. That's another lovely Irish proverb. This applies to everyone present at this moment. May we all be alive and well on this day next year and looking forward to another wedding, another match, another something that will give us all pleasure. Good morning, my